The diversity puree is known for its punctuality and its litter picking. Welcome and thank you very, very much for joining us this morning. We've got a very impressive panel for you today. Um, today we are launching our litter in lockdown study. This is CPRE's 10th event of 2020 and uh, the final denouement before Christmas and the new year. So a very exciting moment. So the past nine months have had a devastating impact on communities and have presented us with so many new challenges across all spheres and in the environment it's included littering and this study has looked at the effects of how coronavirus and the lockdown has changed our behaviour in terms of litter and of course comes up with some positive recommendations for moving forward. Um, we're delighted that it's gone live today and uh, there's been lots of media coverage already. I was awoken this morning to the news that Mail Online have done a big piece on it um, and uh, the BBC regional radio are picking it up as well so it's very exciting. I hope you might have seen some of that, you'll see it, see it later on. Um, and one of, one of our big messages today is, is that there's, there's already existing uh, solutions and the deposit return scheme for plastic bottles is, is um, the one that we could be getting on with. So we'll be really talking about that today. Thank you very much for coming and hearing about the study today and what more can be done to tackle litter and waste as we move into a new year. We've got the most impressive panel you could possibly hope for. We have Rebecca Powell, the uh, MP and Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for DEFRA, Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank you for joining Morning. us. Rebecca. We've got Ferriel Clark, Labour MP and member of the Environment Audit Committee. Thank you for joining us, Ferriel. Good morning. Morning. We have Isla Lester, an anti-litter champion and CPRE Green Clean participant. Good morning, Isla. Good morning. Lovely to see you. And we have the report's co-author, Kat Chapman, um, project manager of CPRE's Cleaner Counties Initiative, funded by Esme Fairbairn Foundation. Good morning, Kat. Good morning. Thank you all very much for joining us, especially so close to Christmas. Uh, like you, I find litter particularly upsetting. I don't know what it is about litter. It's not just that it's so unsightly and spoils an often otherwise beautiful green space, or even on the streets. There's something about it which feels almost deliberate, almost a, 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 an act of contempt that somebody has dropped something and doesn't care about. It. And it's almost an expression of, you know, this is somebody else's job to deal with. Um, so it, it's really a very powerful and emotional response, I feel, to it. And even more so with fly tipping. I don't know how much you've come across fly tipping, but CPRE, we're very concerned with the future of the Green Belt, which is countryside near where people live. I love going walking in the Hertfordshire Essex borders near where I live um, and talking to people there who are trying to keep it green. People still living a rural lifestyle right on the edge of London and the, the battle they have against fly tippers, people coming out of town with lorries full of rubbish and junk and just dumping it in their fields. It's, it's shocking and really makes me feel very quite emotional. And this has all been a lot worse since Covid. But of course, as today's report reminds us, the real culprits are often the producers, people producing such vast quantities of packaging, paying little attention to how the items they sell and profit from are going to be disposed of and the damage they cause the environment. So it's little wonder really that disregard travels down the supply chain to consumer behaviour. So in, in many ways, it's a rather depressing situation. But actually, as we've always found at CPRE, where there is litter, there's always hope. Um, and it does seem to engage great passion and positivity. And of course, with Isla, our litter champion today, you couldn't have a better example of someone who gets enthused by dealing with litter. People, armies of volunteer litter pickers th throughout the ages. And of course, our, our former president, our hero, litter hero, Bill Bryson, anti-litter hero, who has always been a stalwart campaigner for picking up litter and dealing with litter in the countryside. And of course, the, the fact that this report and our Clean the Counties campaign has had investment from the charity sector shows this is something that's very important to all of us. And CPRE has championed reduction in litter since its birth back in 1926. Um, the first litter pick was in 1929, can you believe that? And we've played an active role locally and nationally in the campaign against litter um, for endless local volunteer cleanups and the first countryside code of conduct upheld by litter wardens to galvanising support for the first Keep Britain Tidy campaign in 1951. I'm delighted that Keep Britain Tidy, which is now an organisation in its own right, are with us today. Fast forward to 2019, and after two years of the, the new CPRE Green Clean litter picks, a group of children met the then Secretary of State for Environment, Michael Gove, with our eye-catching reverse vending machine. We've got a great photo of that, so we should have got out the archives actually, uh, which I'm sure Michael Gove promised to implement a deposit return scheme for reuse of, of, of bottles. So we're definitely keeping the government to, to account on that. Because the deposit return scheme is such a big win-win, um, and something that works so well in so many other countries, it really seems something we need to move on with. Last year, we demonstrated an all-in DRS, 
which picks up all types of bottle waste, could generate 2 billion for the economy over 10 years. And that's according to the government's own impact assessment. A DRS scheme would obviously reduce the amount of waste sent to landfill and reduce air and water pollution, as well as fewer carbon emissions caused by the extraction and production of raw materials, more raw materials needed to make these containers. And of course, that would lead to savings for the Treasury, for local councils, for all those who have to deal with litter, um, and of course, taxpayers in the end, and put some of the onus back on the people who make the stuff. And I think they might be part of the reason it's taking so long to implement. So let's put the pressure on those producers as well. So litter may have changed in lockdown, but solutions like the DRS are still there. They're still the right solutions and they create a more sustainable society for all of us. So without more ado, um, I'm going to move on to our speakers. Um, I'm going to each introduce each of them in turn. They're going to say their own piece for five minutes and then there'll be a chance for you to ask us any questions and answers because uh, there are over 100 people here today. I'm absolutely delighted by that. Um, we won't necessarily be able to ask all your questions, but uh, please enter them into the box. You've got to uh, you can write them into the Q&A box and then our moderators will sort them out and, and choose a few select ones to make sure we get a good range of questions. So apologies if you don't get your question asked, but please do have a go and please always remember to say who you are in your organisation so we know who's so who we know who's asked it and we can give you a little plug as well. And um, do use our social media as well to get uh, points across. So the social media hashtag is hashtag litter in lockdown and CPRE's Twitter handle is at CPRE. So, uh, get out there, get tweeting. So without any more ado, I'm going to introduce Kat Chapman, who is um, CPRE's co-author, project manager of the Clean Accountants campaign, and who is going to talk about our Litter and Lockdown study. Over to you, Kat. Thank you very much, Crispin. So um, I wanted to explain a bit about the Cleaner Counties project, which was working on integrating the work of statutory bodies on working on litter in Essex. Um, and this project started in 2018. Now, this work was restricted by the lockdown that was imposed and COVID and lockdown presented us with unprecedented levels of littering in unprecedented times. We found new and different types of litter. We also found that different places became litter hotspots. And this posed a real challenge to the land managers. And we heard firsthand from the local authorities that we were working with in Essex what a problem they were facing. So the study is particularly pertinent now as the tide against plastic pollution continues to flow and we became more aware and more grateful for our precious green spaces and the environment over lockdown. We felt that it was really important to measure and record the impact that lockdown had on littering and our environment. So our research for the report included both quantitative and qualitative studies. Um, we spoke to local authorities in Essex to get their experience and they reported that litter was moving from town centres to open spaces. Indeed, we carried out a YouGov poll which showed that 75% of those surveyed said they'd spent less time on high streets during lockdown. Um, the volume of litter being dropped was higher than ever, even the best summer bank holiday weekends. It's something that local authorities had just never seen before. Um, people were taking their dinner parties outdoors and having dinner parties in the park and leaving their waste behind, some placing it carefully beside or on top of litter bins, but some leaving it where they sat. The issue was not just the number of items being le left, but also the size of items being left as larger and larger containers and bottles were being left behind as people gathered in groups in public places. The local authority departments were under real great pressure with staffing issues due to self-isolation and shielding, as everybody was during lockdown. Um, but it also changed the waste and recycling habits of the country and local authorities were seeing volumes that we usually only see at Christmas of recyclables being placed out. So the crews needed additional support there, which just put extra pressure on local authority groups. We carried out some quantitative measurements. Um, we carried out a survey of 140 high footfall sites across Essex, and we found that almost 40% of those sites were affected by PPE litter, um, which is the gloves, masks and wipes that started to appear in March. Um, and this PPE litter was seen adjacent to all of the transects that we studied um, and is a very new form of litter. It's not something we've seen littered in any great numbers previously. 90% of the open spaces that we surveyed were affected by packaging litter, 70% of that being drinks litter, with 43% of sites affected by alcohol litter, which again is a pattern that local authorities just haven't seen before. We spoke with the CPRE network 
to understand the national picture with one of the benefits of having a network of CPREs in every county was that we could understand that what we were seeing in Essex was broadly reflective, reflected by the rest of the UK. There was also enormous media coverage over the summer, so we conducted a media review, which again reflected the patterns we were seeing in Essex. In the media, they also in, worked with several psychologists to try and understand the reasons for why we were seeing what we were seeing. Um, and the psychologists suggested several reasons for this, fear and frustration being two of the key factors. Um, the fear of the virus led people to use more single use items and more packaging and frustration at the restriction on people's activities, leading to mild disengagement with social norms around littering. So more people than ever use the open spaces in the countryside during lockdown, and we really hope that those people who've newly discovered their local green spaces and countryside continue to use these spaces. But we need to ensure that the impact of littering is understood through education and communication. The pandemic exacerbated and shifted patterns of littering, but littering is a long lasting systemic problem and solutions need to reflect that. To combat litter and waste in the future, the study recommends policies such as the deposit return scheme and extended producer responsibility on single use items like bottles and cans. We need decisive action on packaging, which can be delivered through the DRS and the EPR schemes set out in the resources and waste strategy. So we call on the government to renew their commitment to the introduction of these measures. These recommendations could not be more timely. A couple of weeks ago, we were disappointed to hear that the rollout of a deposit return scheme may be delayed until 2024. And we hope that this discussion today will highlight the importance of the DRS. Thank you very much. Back to you, Crispin. Thank you very much indeed, Kat. Um, and without any more ado, we're going to go on to our second speaker, who is Isla Lester, anti-litter advocate and CPRE Green Clean participant. Um, Isla, will you tell us what made you interested in litter? Um, I realised that litter was a big problem and it was killing lots of animals. This made me feel devastated. From this point, I decided I wanted to make a change and I also wanted to see what I was capable of and what impact I could have. I'm particularly interested in plastic pollution because on one hand, plastic is a great invention because it has so many uses, but on the other hand, it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous, not just for animals, but for humans too, because it gets into the food chain and eventually we end up eating the microplastic that we have made. Microplastics are small but harmful. I'm also interested in the volume of plastic and the waste that we produce. I have read about the North Pacific garbage patch and it being three times bigger than France. This is unbelievable. Some scientists think that there will be more plastic in the sea than there is fish. This makes me feel sad because without the fish, the coral would die and our whole ecosystem is destroyed. Plastic pollution is bigger than we know. Whilst being in lockdown, I have noticed that there is a large number of face masks, gloves and gel cleaning bottles littering the streets. It's like we replace our normal problem with a new litter problem. Why can't people just put their litter, litter in the bin? It's not difficult. Thank you very much. And that North Atlantic litter patch thing is pretty, particularly shocking, isn't it? What, what do you think we can do about this? I know you've been involved in lots of things. What can people do? Well, I talked to Michael Gove in 2019 about the deposit return system. He said that it was a good idea, but ideas needed to be turned into action. We needed a deposit return system now. It would also be good if environmental issues were part of a school lesson. Children need to be shown what polluting our planet really does. We need to see it for ourselves by going to parks and trips to the seaside. I think more people should live to pick and think before they act so the world can be much cleaner, much faster. I just want more people to follow me and make the world a better place. We need everybody to work as a team to make a difference. Thank you for your time listening to me. Thank you very much, Ilo. You've been doing a lot of litter picking yourself, haven't you? Can you tell me about that? What do you enjoy about litter picking? Um, well, I like litter picking because I've known 
because I know I've done like something right. Yeah, and it's quite sociable. Yeah, I find it fun to do it with my friends and I go around beaches quite a lot and like I'm surprised how much litter there actually mm. is. And I seem to recall that you've got a special litter picking kit. Didn't yes. You? Tell us about um, that. I asked um, one of my family members to get a, lit a litter picker for me for Christmas. Uh, so I could go around litter picking around the town and on beaches. And then my granddad gave me one for Christmas. Is that one of those grabber things? And gloves, yes. Does that make it easier? Yes. Brilliant. Now, as you know, this is my favourite bit coming up, Isla, and because uh, there's something that you and I have in common, isn't there? Can you remember what that is? The green Peter Park. Yeah. The green blue Peter badge. Well, I happen to know that Isla has uh, recently been awarded a green blue Peter badge um, for her letter on litter and a poem on litter. Um, and uh, there's a little secret there, isn't there, Isla? Because you reminded me that when I was your age, or maybe a bit younger, I won a blue Peter badge for doing the same thing. And I found it yesterday. I rooted out. I'm so proud of that. And uh, I hoped you might be able to find your poem that you got your blue Peter badge for and read it out to us. I couldn't find my original letter. I'm going to ask my mum if she's got it somewhere. It's plastic free sea. You're throwing it into the free sea. Please stop. You are you are upsetting me. In the Great Pacific garbage patch, there lies 80,000 tons of litter to catch. Plastic bottles, cans and rope. For the animals, there is no hope. Seals and crabs and fish with fins. They are all getting trapped in rubbish like tins. Of all the plastic, our animals are dying. We need to take action, not just sit crying. We have to we have to be prepared to make a change, to make a difference and rearrange. So next time you see some plastic, put it in the bin and make our world fantastic. That's brilliant, either. And if we were somewhere, yeah, we would all clap if we were in a big hall with lots of people. I'm sure they're all clapping out there. Um, the minister's clapping too. So thank you very much indeed. That's really helpful and inspiration to us all. We can all litter pick, can't we? We can all do something about this, as you've told us, but only special people can win blue Peter badges for it. So, you know, not everybody can have those, can they? But everybody can litter pick. So thank you very much, Either. That's fantastic. Moving on to our next speaker. Um, Ferry Clark is a member of the Environmental Audit Committee. Um, Ferry Clark MP, over to you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ola, you're going to be a hard act to follow. But absolutely, as has been said, you are an inspiration and thank you so much for everything that you are doing and keep on doing it. And um, I will tell lots of people about the amazing work you're doing, so it will inspire people. Um, so thank you so much for inviting me to uh, to contribute to the important virtual launch of your study, Litter in Lockdown. COVID has brought with it new challenges and pressures within our communities, but it's also highlighted the long-standing struggles villages, towns and cities face. This timely report points us towards action that is sorely needed to tackle the blight of litter. So before the pandemic struck, UK supermarkets were estimated to produce 800,000 tonnes of plastic waste every year. And we were witnessing the, the equivalent of a truckload of plastic entering our precious oceans every single minute. The destruction route on our environment has gone on too long. Not only does it harm a natural environment, it, but it harms our public spaces and sense of civic pride. As your report notes, there has been an eye-watering rise in fly tipping in some areas, and without financial support from the UK government, councils will struggle to address this issue. And, and litter and waste are sometimes an afterthought in much of the public policy. But if we are to make good on our promises to cut our carbon emissions and clean up our local spaces and level up our nation, we must undertake an in-depth analysis of how we can improve this situation. So where we need progress, we sadly get delay. For example, the environment, um, the environment bills provision for a deposit return scheme was limited to certain materials 
rather than creating a framework that could be broadened out to include more types of plastic or bioplastics in the future. Plus the bills waste and resource efficiency measures were focused on end of life solutions to waste and recycling and much more emphasize and much more emphasis is needed on the production side and to encourage the reduction uh, of waste in the first place. So we must build a more circular economy in the UK where the raw materials we use to make our products come increasingly from recycling our waste. This will help us reduce littering. A perfect example of words being put into action can be seen in Wales. So the Welsh Labour government has exceeded its 64% recycling target for 2019 and 2020 to reach a record high of 65.1% making it the best nation in the UK for tackling waste. The policies implemented in Wales have been achieved during the pandemic, showing that with imagination and determination, we can make a real difference to our communities. Um, the lockdown across the UK have rekindled people's love and need to visit outdoors, outdoor spaces. As it's, as, as, as it's been said, the physical and mental well-being benefits of going out to a local park or travelling to the countryside are all well known. But with this renewed passion for green spaces has come a, uh, come a need to improve people's understanding of their responsibilities. As CPRE study shows today, there is a need for improved understanding of the countryside code and this can only be achieved with concerted efforts from all levels of government. This is why I welcome your report into littering. It demonstrates the need for comprehensive deposit return scheme, the very same call Labour has been making, and to see a full extended producer responsibility scheme implemented sooner rather than later. So policies already exist that hold those who litter to account for their actions, but we must look at the issue of waste on a larger scale. And that is why producers must also be held to account for products being produced that harm our environment. From the takeaway box to the single use face covering, we have seen an, a massive increase um, in the litter. So changing the throwaway culture in the UK will be difficult, but it's not impossible. Uh, so a wholesale shift in public attitude is needed, and this will bring with it improvements to our health and well-being, not to mention to our environment. The UK, the UK has shown in the past that it can overcome pollution and waste. This can be achieved with a renewed determinism and desire to work with local communities and organisations like CP, uh, CPRE. Um, so thank you very much for your efforts into CPRE and I'm delighted to join you here today. Thank you very much, Ariel. And so moving on to our final, last but not least speaker, Rebecca Powell, MP, who is Parliamentary Under Secretary of State, uh, Under Secretary of State for DEFRA, Department of Involvement, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank you, Rebecca. A strong emphasis on producer responsibility and what people are saying. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll touch on that uh, in a minute, uh, Crispin. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me to join uh, today as well and uh, to, to discuss these really absolutely crucial issues that we're talking about. I'm, I'm very pleased to be taking part and thank you so much for organising it and for everyone who's done all this work. Um, and obviously, you know, we have, a, we have a close sort of working relationship with the CPRE, especially on litter, um, and uh, particularly since we've developed the litter strategy for England. And it's always, you know, your views are always very much uh, taken into account and appreciated. And we were pleased, uh, for example, with uh, the litter in law uh, report that was published earlier this year. Uh, and that's that's being developed actually into a very useful online tool. 
and uh, and your constant um, keeping us on the ball, I would say, uh, it, you know, is actually really welcome. I've got to say that. And and we've obviously faced a sort of renewed uh, phase, uh, haven't we, over these last months with the impact of coronavirus, because that's that's thrown up some some additional litter issues uh, that Kat touched on uh, so eloquently there about the PPE, the disposable face coverings. Um, and obviously it's really disappointing that we've seen the rise in this new kind of litter. Uh, but, but I think there's plenty we can do to tackle it. And I just want to say, you know, uh, I've done plenty of litter picking myself. And uh, particularly when I'm out on my bike, actually, I cycle around my country lanes just for exercise. But the number of times, instead of being all relaxed and calm when I come back, because I've been out in the countryside, instead I'm seething because I see uh, litter chucked in the beautiful country lanes and I'm often stopping to collect it and counting how many bits I see. And uh, and so I and also I grew up on a farm and of course I'm really conscious of what landowners and farmers face with you know beds and fridges and things dumped in their gateways my poor old dad is still constantly battling with that and I just like uh, you Crispin and he and Isla I don't get the um, the psyche that makes anyone think that that is acceptable uh, I really do not uh, and I absolutely wanted to applaud you Isla for um for for your terrific input this morning uh you should be proud of yourself your mum should be super proud and so should your school um uh, i'm i'm really envious of your blue peter badge because i never got one my sister got one but i didn't i've never really got over that <laughs> that's funny crispin isn't it it does mean a lot so that is absolutely brilliant i loved your poem and I've got to say, before I came to Parliament, um, I, I found out about those micro beads, those tiny little microplastics, uh, which were particularly being used in what, cosmetics and like shower gels and things. So I set about my own campaign before I got here to do something about that. And lo and behold, when I got to Parliament, was able to work on it. And I think it shows that the actions you take can actually achieve things, Isla, because we have now banned those tiny little plastics in cosmetics and care products. And uh, and we did a report on the Environment Audit Select Committee, committee that I know uh, Ferriel is on now. I was on that. And, and, you know, through all these measures that Parliament was able to bring to bear, uh, we were able to ban them. It's only a small part of those plastics in the ocean. But look, that shows what we can do, doesn't it? And so you must keep up your work and I'll do whatever I can here to, to help, all right? So uh, we'll make a pact with that. Um, and, uh, you know, and I want to thank everyone else who does litter picks because, you know, we've got the, we have great days, don't we? The Great British Spring Clean, the Great British Be Beach Clean, the CPRE's own um, Green Clean, which I hope will be back again next year. But of course, prevention is, is much better than cure. We'd rather the litter wasn't there in the first place. Um, and I do agree with CPRE's recommendations to encourage um, in particular, the proper use of face coverings. Uh, and actually, government has published guidance uh, and shared advice and videos on social media about when uh, when to wear face coverings. Because at the beginning, people were uncertain, weren't they? So they wore them more than than they thought perhaps they needed to. But we've done we've given out guidance now, and also how to make reusable face coverings. Um, I've I've got several uh, that, that can be rewashed. Um, obviously, the, it, it, the right ones uh, in the right place. Uh, and then also advice on proper disposal of the ones that need to be disposed of. So um, uh, I think uh, hopefully that's that's helpful. And as the, as the CPRE have highlighted it in this report, this year has obviously brought um, many more people out into the countryside. I think that's really what you're you're, you're getting at, Kat, isn't it? And um, obviously I'm a huge supporter of health and well-being, and getting outside uh, can bring those benefits. Um, but uh, this summer, in response to issues reported to us by stakeholders uh, and, and things that your report actually highlights, we did develop the Respect the Outdoors campaign and that encouraged people to follow the countryside code uh, and, and it highlighted the impacts of littering. And we also supported in co-funding Keep Britain Tidy's Love Parks campaign, which also encouraged people to treat parks with respect. So I think we saw all the things you were mentioning, Kat, didn't we, to start with? So then, uh, we, you know, we, we then pr it produced as much as we could that might help to influence people not to leave all that litter behind. Um, they have had a po positive influence on people's intended disposal of PPE litter 
and recognition of the countryside code. Uh, and, and actually a lot of local authorities have said they found that useful and beneficial. Uh, and the short version of the countryside code was also updated and Natural England are now leading on a much fuller review and refresh of the code, which which we hope you know will will also have its impact. But unfortunately, stricter measures are sometimes required and councils do have legal powers to take enforcement actions against those fly tipping. Uh, anyone caught fly tipping or littering may be prosecuted, uh, which could lead to a criminal uh, record or fine and or indeed imprisonment in the case of uh, fly tipping. But instead of prosecuting, councils may also decide that they want to issue a fixed penalty notice, i.e. one you know, on the spot. And as part of DEFRA's uh, COVID response, my officials have been working very closely with local authorities, the waste industry and others to support the waste sector and identify uh, and act on the additional challenges that COVID has presented. And, um, and we've also ensured that essential waste collections, management and disposal services have continued to operate across the country. Uh, for example, DEFRA supported and worked with colleagues uh, from the police, local authorities, so that we could safely open the household waste recycling centres. Uh, many were closed initially, as, as you'll know, um, early in lockdown, but actually, you know, they have to be applauded. Uh, they reopened those centres very quickly uh, so that we could keep that the flow of waste going. And uh, on top of the COVID response activity, work on the wider litter strategy com commitments has actually uh, continued this year. The Waste and Resources Action Plan, that's RAP, which lots of you will know about, have recently published the Right Bin in the Right Place Guide for local authorities on behalf of DEFRA and the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, because uh, it's no good going to the park with all your litter and then not finding anywhere to put the litter. I mean, that's all part of this whole issue, isn't it? Uh, and I'm really delighted that we're supporting uh, this particular guidance with a £2 million grant programme for local authorities launched by RAP today. Uh, and in the litter strategy, we explained that we want to see businesses recognising what they can do to discourage the littering of their products and packaging and the potential benefits of, to their brand of being associated with reducing rather than causing litter. Um, we've recently published a report produced by the Advisory Council on packaging, looking at how product design can help reduce litter, uh, meeting another of our commitments outlined in the litter strategy. Uh, and we have published our own litter consumption study carried out by Keep Britain Tidy. And like CPRE study, uh, it also found uh, that litter related um, items and packaging are amongst the most commonly littered items. And uh, on the back of that, I've held two round tables with industry representatives. I got them together around a table to try and bang their heads together, uh, basically, to discuss what they're doing to tackle litter caused, um, caused uh, by the use and consumption of these particular things, cigarette uh, butts in particular. Because uh, one of the awful things about them, of course, is they contain toxic chemicals. And uh, when it rains, of course, you know, they get washed down the drain. This, this is not a good thing. Um, and it was actually encouraging to hear lots of them individually have got good incentives, useful incentives, especially amongst the, the uh, fast food um, uh, uh, companies. And um, I think what came out of those red tables, they did actually commit to lasting change, but also to sharing ideas and potentially working much more cohesively. And I think um, I think that would be beneficial. Uh, I'm going to wind up, though, uh, Crispin, by just touching on the environment bill. Um, as you will know, this is a huge piece of uh, legislation. Um, uh, so, Isla, we're trying to make laws that will help us tackle a whole lot of things to have a better clean and more sustainable environment. But in this piece of legislation are, are a huge number of measures that I honestly think will do a lot of the things we're talking about today. And that's where you have to have the policies in place, the framework to drive the action that we're all talking about. And I'm as determined as you are uh, to tackle this. And so in this piece of legislation, the Environment Bill, and it's just been through what's called its committee stage. That was a solid month uh, in committee because the piece of legislation is so huge. Uh, and it's now got to get through its report stage into the House of Lords, then back to the House of Commons. But 
trust me, it will be will be there soon. Uh, and within it, it gives us the powers to set up this deposit return scheme that everyone's being referred to today. And I agree, I think it will make an enormous difference to uh, cutting down on our waste. Uh, and we'll be consulting. We've already done a lot of discussion and engagement, including with you, uh, about how this scheme should work. Uh, and uh, that's one thing. And then the other um, uh, measure that the bill will enable is the ex what's called extended producer responsibility, which is quite a mouthful. Uh, but that is what that will do. And I think that's what we all want as well. It will put the onus back on the people who make the stuff in the first place, the packaging. As uh, say, I'm just giving a random example, you know, my, my glasses case or, um, you know, the packet my lipstick came in. Uh, the people who design that or want to sell it in the first place will have to think about uh, what's going to happen to that package, that either that container or, or that packaging at, at the end of its life, and they'll be responsible for paying that. So it'll make them think about how much they want to spend on it. Uh, and I think design things that can either be reused, recycled, broken down and used, turned into something else so that actually we get rid of that whole thing called litter. And that's as we move towards what's called the circular economy. I think we're all thinking like mindedly about that. The bill is going to enable us to bring forward all of these measures to give us what I would call a paradigm shift in the way we all think and how we look after our environment. So I will wind up there, Crispin. Wanted obviously to thank you all. Uh, uh, we'll be working on this uh, at speed. Uh, and also working with consumers to keep all that messaging going that that we're all trying to give today as well. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And it's great to hear your shared passion and commitment to the cause, um, a, a commitment to collaboration and, and working across the sectors to tackle this, but also as government ministers, commitment to legislation and, and hard statutory enforcement, because that's so critical. Um, really great to hear that from you and um, we, we will come back to DRS but um, I've actually got to charge my laptop I made the terrible mistake and I've now got 10 minutes left on the back and we've got 20 minutes left so I'm going to set the first question and, and ask the panel to answer it and I'm going to quickly fix that problem so the first question is how can we turn people's greater use of green spaces over lockdown to our advantage for example by encouraging greater personal responsibility for reducing identifying and fighting litter problems that comes from Neil Sindon of CPRE London and perhaps I could start with you Kat how can we turn the enthusiasm for green space to advantage in tackling some of these issues um, well I think I think what we need to do is capitalize on the fact that people have been using these green spaces and make sure that we run some effective communications around the countryside code obviously the countryside code was um, the short version was reissued during lockdown um, and there were the campaigns published but um, Keep Britain Tidy have run a couple of brilliant campaigns around loving parks and respecting those local spaces and I think we just need to keep the noise up around that we need to keep up the volume keep up the pressure and certainly as we move into next summer um, sort of once we're through the winter when obviously pe people are using the spaces a little bit for shorter periods of time, shall we say, rather that they're not necessarily hanging around in the parks. But as we move back into the spring, I think it's really key that these messages are reiterated and repeated and that the countryside code is refreshed. Um, I welcome the work that's going to be going on with that, because I think we do need to make sure that 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 word, the word is out there and, and people hear how to interact with the countryside and, and understand how the countryside works, that it's not just like your local park. There isn't a bin every everywhere you go and actually it is your responsibility to take that letter home with you. Yeah no, absolutely and it's interesting it wasn't just countryside was it it was urban parks but there was a lot of talk about countryside during lockdown but I saw terrible um, littering in the urban parks near where I live so it's not surprising that comes from our London group. Um, Isla have you got any thoughts on how we can use people's enthusiasm for green space to encourage them to be a bit more responsible about littering? What do you think? Um, okay. Carry on. You could educate people to like litter pick in the park instead of just like go around just like telling them because some people might not actually get like 
they don't actually know how like big it is. So you can actually get people to enjoy doing it rather than seeing it as a job or something that's difficult. Yeah, which is exactly what you've done, isn't it? And shown us very well. Thank you very much. What about you, Ferial? Any thoughts on that one? I, I totally agree with Ina. I think education is absolutely necessary. But I remember in my past, like in, in my previous role, when I was a, a lead member and local authority for waste and, and environment and green spaces. And um, what you find is the people who most some people don't think that they are contributing um, to waste. So they will neatly put their their cans and their bags in somewhere near a bin or somewhere near vis that that's visible near a, a gate, thinking some you know that they've done their bit by putting it making it visible. But it's it's going it's educating people that it's you know there is no you know and there's no there's no magic to this with this waste disappearing. That someone has to collect it. So nicely putting it neatly on top of already packed bin or near a gate or near near somewhere visible, it's just not good enough. And I think we do need to do more on messaging. Campaigning is absolutely key. It's not something that you can do once and forget about it. It has to be continuous. And and I know in in some of the parks and green spaces. Um, here in London, they are so well used in the summer. They turn into it's almost like festival uh, uh, rates of, of use of, of the parks. So there is. So I think I think there is uh, the campaigning to the education, the campaigning target towards it to ensure that people understand their responsibility as well is key. Uh, but I must say a lot of authorities up and down the country have cut their budgets for communications around because it's one of the budgets to you know to it's go to budgets to cut when things are hard and and we're not we know it's not getting easier so we need to make sure that it is prioritized that there is targeted funding for communication around these issues especially around litter and uh, around responsibility so um, both yes to, to education and campaigning, but we need resources for local authorities to deliver that. Thank you very much. And yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a whole psychology thing, isn't it? I was walking in the fens recently and somebody put one of those awful poo bags from dog poo in the um, in the hedge. And I was walking back the same way about a couple of hours later and there were three or four there. And there's this thing people think, because once they see one, they think, oh, that's an OK place to leave litter. It's, it's a horrible <laughs> phenomenon. Um, so I, th I think the th interesting thing about litter is it really does work across all part, all le layers of society, doesn't it? This really is about individual responsibility, about education, about local action, about societal action and about um, commercial business responsibility and, and legal enforcement and statutory. So it works across all layers. It's quite an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Um, so Minister, if we can come to you on that one and perhaps actually home in on there's a couple of questions that are specifically for you, if that's all right, and you might not be surprised they're around the DRS. Um, a question from Samantha Harding, who is from Reloop, um, who formerly worked for CPRIA, happens to know. Um, she's saying that uh, obviously she's recognising the delay to the DRS, possibly linked to lockdown, understandable, but do you think there are any additional worries because of the Brexit process that's going to slow down DRS or any outstanding issues? That you would need further evidence on to help move it forward. So, a very specific question about DRS there for you. Okay, thank you. Um, well, just on the last note, obviously, I mentioned the wrap, the two million pounds. You know, that's going to that that will actually help local authorities with this whole thing about messaging. Right, been in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely right uh, that, that we identify where they where the hotspots are. Put the bins in the right place. Do the right messaging. Work with the schools. Um, Particularly, we do have an eco school. You know, the, the eco schools program is excellent, and so many schools do take part in that. Don't know if Ireland school does, and I get lots and lots of letters uh, from pupils uh, taking part in those things. So all of those we need to keep up. Also, I did I did want to say, because we want people to get out in the countryside uh, and uh, w w w and out into green spaces. So we've got love parks. We've also got tiny forests. Uh, a new project we've just given money to through our green recovery challenge fund. That's forest the size of tennis courts, you know, uh, particularly in urban and peri-urban areas. Earthwatcher are uh, doing that project through our green recovery challenge fund. All of these things are absolutely really important, but we don't want them covered with litter. So I, I reiterate all those points about um, how we have to message, 
but also that moving on to the deposit return. Of course, this new whole new world that's coming in through the legislation. Uh, the, the main aim of it is to reduce litter, you know, so that that thing doesn't doesn't exist. That's what we'd like in the long in the long run, wouldn't we? And actually, whilst COVID and the lockdown is, it has put pressures on on all the people working behind the scenes on these schemes. It work has been going on actually at pace, and I am working at pace with my team uh, on all of the discussions around particularly deposit return and EPI. But as you can imagine. These things are not straightforward. For business, we have to make sure this is going to work correctly. We have to make sure the, the machines are in the right place. And we've got that whole chain operating about uh, what they'll collect, how they'll collect, how they'll work with the doorstep collections uh, and how business is going to integrate. All of those things have to be right. So what we wouldn't want to do is race something in uh, and then find it wasn't actually ticking the right box. I think you'll uh, completely appreciate that, but we're welcoming all the, all, all the comments you're feeding and there'll be a second consultation very, very soon. But, you know, I am I am working at pace to say, you know, can we do this as quickly as possible? So I think you've got to rest assured uh, in, in the not too distant future, we will have it. Fantastic. And Brexit isn't making any difference to it at all. If that was, I think that was part of the question. Uh, our environmental agenda for this government is more important than ever. Uh, and I think all the things we've talked about recently, the Green Recovery Challenge Fund, the, the Fair Green Recovery, uh, all of these um, things and the huge uh, waste and resources agenda through the way, through our strategy, waste and resources strategy, but then the measures in the bill that are helping to bring a lot of that forward. I think that demonstrates uh, how important this is. Certainly to me personally, uh, I want to see these things, you know, coming into place. Absolutely. So do you think we can get the DRS in 2023 as originally planned? I'm not going to be drawn on that, but all I'm going to do is tell you I am uh, working at pace with my officials uh, who are excellent. I don't know if any of them are on the call, but you know, these things are challenging, but we are, uh, we understand the issues and we got to get onto that circular economy we all want, haven't we? You know, we want a sustainable planet uh, and that's how we're going to do it. So the rumours it's been postponed to 2024 are just rumours then? You can, you can try and push me as much as you like, but I'm going to say wait for the second consultation and go to town on feeding into it. Right. Excellent. Look forward to that. Um, uh, we're moving on to another topic now, which is roads. And again, when, when I'm walking around the countryside, I always notice the nearer you get to a main road, suddenly the litter starts to really stack up. And I'm afraid it is people throwing stuff out of car windows a lot of the time. We've got a specific question from Neil Kerridge at A27 cleanup campaign about trunk roads, national trunk roads, which are currently responsible for local authorities. But um, often they find it very hard to keep them clean because Highways England don't coordinate with them on closure schedules, etc. Um, it's also a huge burden for local authorities. Would, would you support, Minister, um, the request of councils along the south coast and elsewhere in the UK to transfer responsibility for national trunk roads cleaning to Highways England? Well, it, it, a good point was is raised there because, and it is an issue that is constantly uh, highlighted because I there's nothing worse is there than seeing those uh, road you know road line layers of litter um, and actually um, a, a lot of work's been going on talking to Highways England about this issue I, I, I've spoken to them myself uh, and and actually speaking to the also to the uh, one of the transport ministers about it because because our agendas obviously cross over there um, and um, in the last annual uh, progress report on the litter strategy we, we did defer some of this work um, uh, for for a while, but we're having ongoing discussions with DEFRA, the local authorities, Department of Transport, to explore. Their, their, it's 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 a complicated crossover, uh, uh, but uh, but but we're having discussions about that because it is quite clearly something that does need to be tackled. It's similar to the issue about air pollution and mm. where responsibilities lie, uh, and and there needs to be a lot more cross you know coordinated work on this. Uh, but 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 there are there are um, there are ongoing discussions underway about exactly that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know, Ferriel, if you wanted to comment on that question at all. Otherwise, we can widen it out. 
And just just on the um, first question, I, I sympathise with Rebecca. These um, you know, these are huge policies affecting you know the the the, the private sector, local authorities, uh, you know, and, and everyone. So it is you know that it is slow. It does take time. Um, when I went to look into local government, I realised, and I, I was I was really surprised how slow it, how slow policy making is. And then I've you know haven't gone into Parliament. I've seen this in even slower. But on packaging, um, my first meeting um, on plastic packaging was in 2010, where, when Grant Schatz was a minister for environment. And the fact that you know we are still talking about it, and you know if, when we look at our other uh, counterparts in Europe, in Europe, when you look at Germany, where they've got you know where they where 98.5 percent of bottles are returned, and we are still talking about introducing the scheme. It is we do need to actually take a look at ourselves um, and actually then ask the question, are we moving fast enough? I don't think we are. I don't think it's good enough, especially where we are with plastics at the moment. Um, I'm sure most most of you will be aware that only in January this year we had 42, 42 shipment containers of uh, plastic returned back from uh, Malaysia. Um, if we have a problem with plastic, we have a problem with packaging, we have a problem with plastic bottles, we need to actually take action, we need to put policies in place sooner. So yeah, um, I, I, yeah I agree with your uh, with the um, questioner. Thank you. Kat, any reflections on that? Can I, uh, Crispin, can I just say a bit more about the plastics? Sorry, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I think it's a really important issue. I think, yeah, the action is not fast enough. We do need to, to move. We need to pressure. Um, as I totally agree with what Ferriel said, the work, it's been slow and we need to move on apace really with these things. We've been talking about it for a long time, but the time now is for action. Thank you. I've got a specific question for Isla um, from Katie Atkinson, CPRE North Yorkshire local group. Um, she's asking Isla whether you'd be happy to share your wonderful litter programme across the CPRE network. We have CPREs in every part of England. There's lots of people who would enjoy seeing it. And if we could share it, it could help educate younger members and followers on social media. What do you think of that, Isla? Yeah, I want to get the word out to everyone. Brilliant. OK, that's a yes. So we've got those commitments. We've got commitments from the minister to talk about how is England on trunk roads. We've got commitment from Isla to share her poem. So this is going really well. Um, so moving on to health now. And um, we've got uh, a question on health, which I just uh, lost there. So where are we? Um, Professor Karen Hume from the uh, University of Essex Law School. Could part of the campaign in green spaces involve linking with green health and wellbeing research and initiatives? maybe running and cycling teams, for example, park runs. Lots of enthusiasm around that, of course, the whole wellbeing agenda. Can we tie that into caring for the environment and, and litter picking, do you think? Should we go around? Uh, Kat, do you want to start on that? Because you're nodding. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I'm particularly passionate about that. I feel that um, the use of green spaces is particularly good for mental health. I think that's been something that's been widely recognised throughout the pandemic and the lockdown, that actually people's mental health has suffered as a result of lockdown and the restrictions that we've been under. And our local green spaces and the countryside have been absolutely essential in helping people to still see their friends, to, to still socialise, but also to appreciate the beauty of the countryside. We were blessed with the most wonderful weather during lockdown. And I think that really, really helped people to get through. So I think it is absolutely essential that we work on promoting the mental health benefits and the physical health benefits of using our green spaces and also the benefits that actually, like Isla says, of going out litter picking. I regularly go out litter picking with my daughter and who's seven and she absolutely loves it and it gives her a real good sense of well-being that she's done something really positive for the community, but also it's great exercise. So absolutely agree. That's an excellent, um, an excellent suggestion. Um, good part of green prescribing, couldn't it, by doctors? Ferial and uh, Rebecca perhaps could ask you, do you think there's a potential of a link across to the very powerful, well-funded Department of Health here to get them to do a bit more preventive health work around litter picking? 
Well, um, if I gave, it's right if I go first. Okay. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that because actually um, we've got a green social prescribing initiative, which DEFRA uh, is is linking with the Department of Health on, and uh, a great deal of work's gone into this. Something I've particularly pushed for, and uh, we'll be announcing the the first areas that are getting a tranche of funding to actually uh, run projects uh, which will act as, as trials effectively in all across the country, uh, which will be prescribing uh, runs in the park or walks through the forest or all of these things where we know uh, there are really positive impacts on health and wellbeing from getting outside into our green spaces. So we're already on that and the um, an academy for uh, social prescribing has been set up. DEFRA's working closely with that too. Uh, so we're really moving on in this space. I think it's really, really important. Um, just very quickly, on, I, I was trying to get in on the last um, point about doing much more uh, and widening the whole issue of whether we're tackling plastics or uh, you know how quickly we're actually reducing this. Of course, I've, although we've touched just on EPR and deposit return in the Environment Bill, there are many other measures. It, the Environment Bill gives us the ability to set targets for everything in the environment. We've got to set some legally binding targets by October 2022 in each of the sections of the bill. And one of the big sections, of course, is waste and resources. And we will be able to, if we want to set targets that you've got to cut plastics by this much or other litters by another percentage, we will have the tools to do it. I think that's really important. And also, we have already, the Treasury uh, uh, brought in the measure whereby you'll have to pay a tax if you're a business and you, your product, your 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 um, single use plastic doesn't contain 30% recycled plastic. So we're already moving at pace to bring in a lot of the things I think um, Frail is, is, is aiming at and CAT. And, but I just think perhaps people aren't, aren't aware of it and there'll be also a single use plastic um, tax. So, so lots of the measures, measures underway. Finally, we, we really are moving at pace on this. Thank you very much. And I'm glad you mentioned targets in the Environment Bill because that was a question from Camilla Zair, Friends of the Earth, specifically on enforcing plastic pollution reduction targets. I think that... Freya wants to come in again there. Isla. Do, do oh, Isla. Isla. Sorry, Freya. That's all right. Isla, do you want to come in? We, we're, we're actually near the end, so I'll use this as the last chance for everybody to say their piece. So, I, Isla, over to you. Well, me and my friends enjoy spending time outside and we feel good for it. But litter picking was used to be a punishment um, in schools and uh, for my dad. Uh, but I think it's something that should be fun and social. That's a really good point. So we need to convert it from a punishment to a pleasure. That's a really good punchline to go out on. Um, Ferry, any last reflections from you? Sorry, uh, thank you. Um, just finally, just say we need to build a more circular economy in the UK where the raw materials we use to make our products come increasingly from recycling our own waste. Um, and I think the government must act to reduce the need for um, importing raw materials from abroad um, and hence increase the UK's resilience. And I think we need to uh, bring a lot of those, uh, a lot of the policies forward a lot faster if we are going to. Uh, actually compete with any of our European uh, colleagues or or, deli or or do what we've been talking about for uh, many, many, many years. Tackling, tackling litter and race is key to economic success, isn't it? Um, Minister, I didn't give you the chance for final words. Have you said what you want to say or any other final words before we yeah, well, just just again to say that it's all about if you need to get the right framework in place, I believe we are now moving at pace with getting the framework in place uh, through the measures in the Environment Bill and the Waste and Resources uh, Strategy, which I'm sure you've all got by your beds. <laughs> um, you know, and that does really move us on to this circular economy, which is absolutely essential. Uh, but I still think to get people outdoors, collecting that litter isla, the, the voluntary help uh, is still going to be so important. Uh, so keep up the great work. Uh, and uh, But what would be great would be if there was uh, no litter to collect and you could just go and play in the park isla <laughs> and spot the birds and count the flowers. There's plenty of lovely things you can do like that too. Uh, but, but thank you again very much for holding this session and for your continued work at the CPRE. Thank you. I'm slightly worried that 
I would be disappointed if there's no litter at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kat, Kat, any final reflections? Uh, yeah, just to echo um, what everyone else has said, really, that I think it's really important that we keep pushing ahead. And, and as, as Minister Powers just said, it would be wonderful if there was no litter to collect. But whilst there is litter to collect, it's fantastic that we have volunteers who are willing to give the time, particularly young volunteers. And I think that's to be absolutely encouraged. The work that Isla and her friends are doing is fantastic. And I think, uh, yeah, you deserve a big pat on the back as well as your Blue Peter badge. Um, but yeah, the it's so important that we stop litter at source get the litter stop the stop litter happening and then we can uh, then we will have more time to spend on other things and making the countryside more beautiful thank you very much thank you all very much thank you all for listening and um, this is a such an important issue um, not least to cpre the countryside charity because litter is a symptom of the unsustainable approach that we use and waste resources and the impact it's having on the countryside has never been clearer. That's a quote from the report we're launching today, which you must read if you haven't already, which is hitting the media as, as we speak. So we've had a fantastic conversation, some good, good questions. Please put more on social media if you didn't manage to get your question out there. Some really interesting contributions from all our panel. Thank you for that. CPRE will be working hard to ensure the recommendations in the Litter in Lockdown reports are taken up by the government. Rebecca's made some fantastic commitments there um, across the board, which we'll be watching closely, of course, as uh, we continue to as pursue resources and waste strategy. Um, the Committee on Climate Change's sixth carbon budget puts waste as a key driver of greenhouse gas emissions and we hope the government therefore will not delay in implementing recommendations in any way. Um, and we're also working harder with the wider set of the Green, Green UK and Wildlife and Countryside Link groups amongst others to ensure these issues move forward and the sector speaks with one voice, particularly on DRS and the resource and waste, waste strategy. So a big thank you to everybody today. Um, we've seen really how litter cuts across all aspects of public policy and individual and social responsibility and action. So a really interesting discussion and really in encouraging. There's so much interest and, and uh, enthusiasm for doing something about it, both at individual, local authority, uh, voluntary and a government and producer level. So let's keep fighting hard on this one. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again to our panellists, Rebecca, Isla, Kat and Ferial. Um, thank you for your time. See you all soon. Have a good Christmas. Bye bye.